The following BLTV program is brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Please enjoy. Welcome to Learn About Law. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law, and today we're going to talk about how to change an irrevocable trust. It's a process called trust reformation. An irrevocable trust is a, an entity that can own property, and it's also a document that explains how that property is going to be handled. The trustee is the person responsible for managing the property for the benefit of the beneficiaries, um, and the beneficiaries are the person that stand to benefit from the property according to the terms of the trust. Beneficiaries can be present beneficiaries or contingent beneficiaries. Contingent beneficiaries are people who have a present right to get a future benefit from the property owned in the trust. So this is like when a present beneficiary owns a home and has the right to live in the home until he or she passes away, but doesn't have the right to sell the home because the contingent beneficiary, maybe that person's daughter, has the right to uh, inherit the property after that person passes away. So it's different from just being named in a will and having that person still be alive um, because you have a present actual vested right to, and when some future event occurs, inherit part of the property. That's what a contingent beneficiary is. And that's going to be important for our later conversation. The creator of the trust is known as the grantor. And in a revocable trust situation, the grantor has the free ability to modify or revoke the trust while he or she is alive and mentally competent. If the grantor creates an irrevocable trust, he or she is giving up the right to change the terms of the trust unilaterally. There are still ways to do it, uh, but he or she can't do it unilaterally. When the grantor becomes mentally incompetent or passes away, a trust that's revocable can become irrevocable. So those are, that's our definition of terms. And now we'll talk about trust reformation, which is how to modify an irrevocable trust. Trustees and beneficiaries, even if they're all in agreement, can't necessarily unilaterally reform a trust just because they want to. There's three ways to do this. Uh, and it's... It, it's not easy to do, but we'll explain how you do it. One is modification by consent. Number two is modification by court approval. And number three is decanting the trust. So let's first talk about modification by consent. This is when the grantor and all possible beneficiaries agree that they want to change the trust. And if the grantor and the present beneficiaries and all of the contingent beneficiaries are in unanimous agreement that they want to change a trust, this is the easiest way to change a, a an irrevocable trust. Um, but you have to have everybody in agreement, including the creator of the trust. So if the creator of the trust can't or won't agree to change the trust, even if all the beneficiaries agree they want to change the trust, then you can't modify this by consent. So once the grantor is, has passed away, modification by consent is no longer possible. Um, parents, though, can consent on behalf of their children when you're talking about modification by consent. So you, you can change whatever you want about the trust as long as the grantor and all of the beneficiaries agree to do it. Uh, the second way to do it is modification by court approval. So this is when modification by consent is not available, usually because the grantor has passed away or is no longer mentally competent to consent. Um, and this is how you do it when all the beneficiaries, even the contingent beneficiaries, agree, but the grantor can't or will not consent. Uh, in this situation, it's a lot more limited what you can actually change. If everyone's in agreement, including the grantor, you can do whatever you want. If the grantor can't or won't consent, but all beneficiaries agree, then the court will change it, but they won't frustrate a material purpose of the trust uh, unless the reason for the modification substantially outweighs the material purpose of the trust. So when you're modification, mo modifying a trust by court approval, what you have to remember is that even if the grantor is no longer living, the court will take into account the wishes of the grantor and what the grantor tried to accomplish by the trust, and the grantor won't frustrate those wishes even if all the beneficiaries agree. Now, if one of the ben beneficiaries uh, can't be reached or their uh, consent is unobtainable, uh, the, a trust can still be modified by court approval as long as the interests of the trustee are protected by the modification. 
Finally, let's talk about decanting, and this is interesting. The trustee can move assets from an old trust to a newer trust, um, and if the trustee has discretion to do so, they're allowed to, basically discretion to distribute for the benefit of the beneficiaries. This is very easy. As long as it's in the beneficiary's benefit, the trustee can take everything out of the old trust and put it into a new trust for the, ben for the benefit of the beneficiaries. If the trustee doesn't have absolute uh, discretion, then it becomes a little bit more difficult. But this is this can be done if the beneficiary's rights don't substantially change, so their rights as to one another and what they're able to do with the property. It's really us usually just used to update the terms of the trust that have become obsolete. So it's the legalese mechanics of how the trust works that can be updated, and it's got to basically benefit all the beneficiaries to do so because you're getting rid of obsolete language, and it can't change the rights of the beneficiaries vis-a-vis -vis one another. Um, but that's decanting, when you take all of the assets from an old, out-of-date trust and put it into a new, updated trust without actually changing the rights of the beneficiaries. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below this post at learn-about-law.com or below the video on our YouTube station. If you need some help, give us a call at 630-324-6666. That's 630-324-6666. We offer free consultations in many areas of law, and we have several offices uh, spread out geographically for your convenience. If you found this helpful, please subscribe to us on YouTube or Apple Podcasts or SoundCloud or wherever you listen to your podcasts or watch your videos. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizeyourbusiness.com. And visit Making Real Estate Fun for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation.